Howdy everyone! In the world of photography, first 50mm camera lenses are some of the most popular lenses out there. Everyone loves a fast 50mm lens because they let in lots of light, give you very out of focus backgrounds, and they tend to be pretty good value for money. There are also a lot of them on the market, and so today I'm on a mission to compare a grand total of 10 different 50mm lenses for you all, to help you find the right one for you. I'm choosing to test lenses with a maximum aperture of f1.8 or wider, and which can be found for less than £1,000 and as little as £30. As I said, there are a lot of choices out there. I shoot with Canon cameras, so you won't find any Nikon or Sony lenses here, I'm afraid. I just don't shoot with them. These are all lenses that do not need special adapters to work on a Canon camera. I'll give you these 10 lenses in order of price and then sum everything up at the end. If you want any more information on a particular lens, then click on the link at the bottom for a full review. Here we go. First up, the Yongno 50mm f1.8, available for only about £35 or about $50. US dollars. This Chinese lens is certainly amazing value for money if you can successfully pick one up on eBay, although B&H sell them now too over in the US. However, in my tests, it turned out to give pretty soft images, particularly on an APS-C camera, and the build quality is cheap and cheerful, although the electronics do at least work properly, giving you basic autofocus. If you just want the nice images that a fast 50mm lens can give you though, and you don't really care too much about sharpness or image quality, then the cheap little Yongno lens will undoubtedly give you that. Although it only gets 12 stars here, it does at least work. Next up, the Canon f1.8 Mark II. This is one of the biggest selling camera lenses of all time. You can pick one up for about 50 quid over on eBay, and not much more brand new. It's small, light, cheap and plasticky, with a fast but noisy autofocus motor and a rubbish manual focus ring. However, it is actually a decently sharp lens, although it doesn't have the best contrast in the world. If you stop its aperture down to f4 or f5.6, then the lens's images become crazy sharp from corner to corner. However, it does struggle when working against bright lights, and it has somewhat ugly looking bokeh, and on a full frame camera, its level of vignetting is dreadful. Its corners become very dark indeed at f1.8. Still, the Canon 50mm f1.8 Mark II is incredibly good value for money and has inspired many a beginner photographer out there. It gets 14 stars. Next, we have the Canon f1.8 Mark I. Yes, this is the original version of the Mark II lens, and even though its design is nearly 30 years old now, it actually tends to sell for slightly more money on eBay. It has exactly the same optics as the Mark II lens I've just described, exactly the same picture quality. But it has a metal lens mount instead of plastic, and it has a much better designed focus mechanism, if you're trying to manually focus. A lot of people prefer this Mark I lens for its slightly superior build quality, and so it gets 15 stars. Next up in price, we have Canon's f1.8 STM lens. This is the most recent of Canon's 50mm f1.8 lenses, and I think it's easily the best. This new STM version may cost £100, but its very good build quality makes it worth the extra money, compared to its older brothers. It has a metal lens mount, a quieter STM autofocus motor, which is good for video work, 7 aperture blades instead of only 5, and it handles flaring a lot better than the older two lenses. It's even a little smaller than the Mark II and Mark I lenses, and it can focus much closer. However, apart from that, its picture quality is about the same. It's no sharper than the older lenses, and it still has that somewhat weak quality bokeh. Still, it's a fantastic way to spend £100, and it gets 19 stars. Next up in price, we have the Canon 50mm f1.4 USM, the first f1.4 lens in this list. An f1.4 lens lets in about 66% more light than f1.8 and gives you a 66% more out of focus background. It's a very nice difference, although obviously you have to pay extra for it. 
at about 250 pounds or 300 US dollars, this is about the cheapest. However, it's a very old design now. It's actually the first camera lens I ever bought and I've gotten some wonderful pictures with it in the past. However, technically, its optics are not impressive. It's only really as sharp as Canon's f1.8 lenses, it has weak contrast, and it also doesn't give you very nice quality bokeh in your out of focus backgrounds. However, it does handle flaring a little better than Canon's f1.8 lenses, and its build quality and autofocus mechanism is also a little better. It's not as good value for money though, so it only gets 15 stars. Our next lens is the Samyang 50mm f1.4, which sells for about £300 or US$400. dollars. It's a manual focus lens, so if you need autofocus or camera controlled aperture, then you'll have to look elsewhere. However, it's actually one of my favourite lenses on this list. It's a surprisingly sharp lens, with much better resolution and contrast than the Canon lenses we've seen so far, even at f1.4. Here you can see a direct comparison. It also displays a bit less vignetting due to its large front element, and it has pretty much the nicest quality bokeh out of all these lenses. Those out of focus backgrounds almost always look perfectly smooth. I have to deduct marks for it being a manual focus lens, although its build quality is actually pretty good, with a very smooth focus ring. Its great picture quality means that it gets 20 stars. Next up, we have the Sigma f1.4 EX HSM, which is about the same price, about £300 or US$400. dollars. Some dealers list it as being a tiny bit more expensive than the Samyang lens. Anyway, the Sigma 50mm f1.4 HSM is another excellent optic. It's very sharp on an APS-C camera, has low vignetting, and very nice bokeh in those out-of-focus backgrounds. It's very similar to the Samyang lens in many respects, except that it has autofocus. A lot of people swear by this Sigma lens, it's certainly a good performer. Two words of warning though. Firstly, its autofocus mechanism is notorious for being frustratingly inaccurate, which was certainly my own experience with the lens. Secondly, this is the only 50mm lens that I haven't tested on a full frame camera, and I've heard that, on full frame, its corners are a bit soft. So that's something else to consider. Other than that though, it's a great lens that gets 21 stars. Next, we have the Zeiss ZE 50mm f1.4. Now we're heading into more expensive territory, as this manual focus lens costs around £400, or about US$550. Zeiss lenses are normally a class act, but this piece of kit is an anomaly in that respect, as it actually has rather poor optics. A few people will be surprised at me saying that, but check out my full review of the lens. It's not really very sharp when you're shooting at f1.4 or f2, it has problems when shooting against bright lights, and the quality of its bokeh is really bad, being full of ugly highlighting, unless you stop the aperture down. It does at least have beautiful build quality, being made with lots of metal. However, having to pay such a lot of money for a lens that's so optically weak and doesn't even have autofocus means that this piece of kit is terribly overpriced. I'm forced to give this lens only 12 stars. If that does sound surprising to you, please do take a look at my full review for more information. Our penultimate lens is the Sigma 50mm f1.4 Art, costing about £650 or US$900. This is an expensive piece of kit, but expensive doesn't necessarily mean bad value for money, if you're getting what you pay for. The Sigma f1.4 Art lens is a class leader in all kinds of ways. Straight from f1.4, it gives the sharpest images out of all these lenses, and if you stop down its aperture, it becomes ridiculously sharp. It also has no distortion and comparatively low vignetting, and a good enough autofocus mechanism, as well as generally lovely build quality. Its only weakness is that it's rather big and heavy, and its bokeh perhaps isn't quite as good as Samyang's 50mm lens. But the sharpness of this Sigma lens is astonishing, making it good value for money despite its high price, and so it gets a whopping 23 stars. 
Our final lens is the Canon 50mm f1.2 USM-L. It's the only f1.2 lens on this list, and you certainly have to pay for that extra brightness. This lens cost about £950, or 1400 US dollars, a huge amount of money. While f1.2 is a very bright maximum aperture, do bear in mind that it only lets in about 33% more light than an f1.4 lens, and only gives you 33% more out-of-focus backgrounds. That's not a big difference. Anyway, this Canon lens is not the sharpest around. On a full-frame camera, its corners are really very soft. It suffers from strong vignetting and some barrel distortion. However, it has very good contrast, and it can handle bright light pretty well. It gives you slightly more out-of-focus backgrounds than the other lenses here. However, the actual quality of that bokeh itself could be a little bit smoother. It has wonderful build quality, and it handles extremely well in use. However, its extortionate price and somewhat average optics make it poor value for money, unless you happen to really need that extra light gathering ability and rugged build quality. It gets 19 stars. Well, let's try to sum everything up. The cheapest lens is the little Yongno, but if you were to ask me what the best value lens is, then it's definitely the Canon 50mm f1.8 STM. It's a lovely little lens with good features for a very low price, and I think all beginner photographers should consider getting one. The best value f1.4 lenses also happen to be the two camera lenses in this list with the best quality bokeh. The Sigma 50mm f1.4 EX HSM and the Samyang 50mm f1.4 both give you beautiful images with lovely out-of-focus backgrounds and less vignetting than other lenses, not to mention very good levels of sharpness. The Sigma lens has an autofocus motor, albeit quite an inaccurate one, while the Samyang lens is supposedly a little sharper in the corners of its images on a full-frame camera. If you have money to spare and you need the sharpest lens on this list, the best lens for professional use, then the Sigma 50mm f1.4 art lens is an astonishing performer, a really technically accomplished camera lens. It really does offer the best image quality for a 50mm lens under £1,000. The images it gives you can really make you smile. And finally, if you're desperate for slightly more out-of-focus backgrounds, and I do mean just slightly, or if you need the most rugged build quality, then a Canon 50mm f1.2 L lens could work for you. It's mostly wedding photographers who buy that lens and can afford to. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and interesting. Let me know your own 50mm lens experiences in the comments below, and as usual, subscribe for more photography videos. Ciao!